Hello, welcome to another video. So you find this problem somewhere on a test. X is 3 more than X cubed. Is X real? You see, all you can say is yes or no. But how do you justify what you say? Okay. Um, I think the first move you want to make is try to make this into an equation or an inequality. I think this should be an equation. X is 3 more than X cubed. So we could say that X is, which is equal to 3 more, which means we're going to add 3 to X cubed. 3 plus X cubed or X cubed plus 3. That's the equation that translates this into mathematics. Can you solve this equation? Let's see. Um, let's say we want to solve it. We're going to have x cubed minus x plus 3 is equal to 0. Can you solve this? The question is not asking you to find x. That's what we're used to. The question is saying, is x real? Is it possible? Is it possible to have an actual number that is greater than its own cube by 3? Naturally, you would say no. Actually, no natural number has this property, okay? So the number cannot be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It doesn't matter what that natural number is. So this is naturally impossible. You see what I did there? But we're not talking about natural numbers. We're talking about numbers, real numbers, real numbers. What does real numbers mean? In case you're confused or you don't know, a real number is any number that's on the number line. Mm, that's as easy as you can make it. Any number you can find on the number line is a real number. If it's not on the real number line, it is not a real number. So ask yourself, is infinity one of the answers? No, because infinity is not on the number line. It is what you get after you leave the number line. We don't know when we're going to get there. Okay, let's go. So how do you prove that X is real or X is not real? Well, the key to this is the intermediate value theorem. I have written my own version of the intermediate value theorem that is relevant to the problem, okay? But it's universal. I just took the portion that's good for me. And what does it say? that if f of x is a continuous function, continuous and it's real, okay? Everything that goes in and comes out, is, it's all about real numbers. So that's what we're talking about because we want to know if x is real. If it's a continuous function on an interval and you pick these two points and you evaluate them and you notice that this gives you a negative number, that's the meaning of f of a is less than zero and the other side gives you a positive number or it's flipped, where the other side gives you a negative and the, this side gives you a positive. As long as you have a negative and a positive, the theorem clearly says, because the function is continuous, you must have a point between A and B where the function is zero, because you can't just jump from negative to positive without going through zero. You see that? So that's the point here. We're not trying to solve this. We just want to show that there's going to be a value of x for which this expression will be equal to zero. And it's going to be a real, real number. Now, before we go into the calculation, you could actually graph this. Just looking at this, this is a cubic function. So if we say let f of x be equal to x cubed minus x plus 3, you could tell that when you plot the graph of this function, what would you get? You're going to get something that looks like this. Mm, this is one option. It must cross the x-axis at some point. It must. So there is an answer. We don't need to know that there's an answer. So by, even by sketching the graph, you can make this your proof. No. You can, we, should, we need to use the intermediate value theorem. It could be one point, it could be three points. You could have a graph like this. Or you could have a graph with just two points. This point and this point. So this is option one, this is option two, this is option three. It doesn't matter whether you have one point, two points, or three points. The question just wants to know that there is just some x. Just one of them. You need one. 
Okay, so how do we use the intermediate value theorem for it? Well, you now have to use your brain and say, I need to get a value that is negative and I need to get a value that's positive. It doesn't matter if it's coming from the other side or from this side. So what can I plug in here so I can get a negative value? What can I plug in to get a positive value? So this is how you show your proof. Okay, you're gonna say this. The first thing is that this function here is a polynomial, therefore it is continuous on its domain. So you're gonna say that f of x is continuous. Okay, on all real numbers, all real x. Let's write it that way. Why? Because it's a polynomial. And because it's a polynomial, you can use the intermediate value theorem for it. That's the only condition you need to satisfy. Okay, now, and from A to B is on the real number line. So what's the next thing? You're gonna go here and now you start guessing. Let me guess, let me plug in zero, okay? Because zero is easy for polynomials. Plug in zero here. F of zero, F of zero will be equal to zero minus zero plus three. Zero minus zero plus three is gonna give you three. This value is positive, so it's greater than zero. So this means that F of X here, or F of, Let's call it f of, we don't know what it is, let's call it f of a, or f of b, it doesn't matter, will be equal to um, 3, which is greater than 0. So we've met this condition, okay? Now, let's try and plug in another number, easy numbers, plug in 1. If we plug in 1 here, it's going to be 1 minus 1, that's 0 plus 3. No, it's still positive. Let's plug in 2. 8, no, that's 8 minus 2, that's 6 plus 3, that's 9. So you notice that if you keep adding, using uh, positive numbers, you're going to end up with positive positive. So let's try a negative number. Let's do negative 1. Negative 1 will be negative 1 minus negative 1, that's negative 1 plus 1, that's 0. <laughs> Not good. So let's do negative 2. Small numbers are always smart. Don't go too far. Negative 2 will be negative 8. Negative 8 plus 2 is... Oh, we got an answer. So we're going to do f of negative 2 will be equal to negative 2 cubed. That's negative 8 minus negative 2 plus 3. This gives me negative 8 plus 2 plus 3. That's negative 8 plus 5. That's negative 3. Ooh, this implies f of b is greater than 0. No, less than 0. Come on less than zero. So as you can see, we have found the two conditions that the theorem states. One has to be negative, the other is positive. And if you get this, we're done. Because all you have to say is that between zero and negative two, between negative two and zero, there must be a value on the number line where this graph will cross the x-axis, that is where the function is going to be equal to zero. So, by the IVT, IVT, since f of negative 2 is less than zero, and f of zero is greater than zero, then there exists some value of x between between negative 2 and 0 such that f of that x is equal to 0. So we have proved that between negative 2 and 0 there is a real solution to this. That is a condition that makes this equal to 0 which makes this true and which makes our question true. So x is real, there's a real x. Actually, if you solve this, you notice that your number is between negative 2 and negative 1. Okay, as you can see, it's from between negative 2 and negative 1. So you can keep closing the gap until you see precisely where this number will be hiding. At least if you don't know where it lives, you know the zip code. Okay, and that's it. So therefore, there is, a, you've proved it, it is real, therefore, x is real. Okay, we're done. Never stop learning.
because those who stop learning have stopped living.